In this video, we'll continue solving a linear algebra problem involving a complex traffic network. The last video analyzed the traffic network, derived the constituent equations by hand, and formed the linear system. Now we need to solve it. It's a massive system and it's also non-square, so let's turn to MATLAB to do the heavy lifting for us. Here we are in the skeleton script. Unlike other examples we've done in the past, we don't have to write a function or anything. We'll just make everything in this simple script. The first part is a MATLAB verification of part B of the problem, which we did by hand in the last video. Let's skip to the bottom and enter the A matrix and B vector, which we also did by hand in the last video. Make sure you test it and double check all of the minus signs. Now we have to solve the system. Because A is not square, we cannot use the INV function, nor can we reliably use the backslash operator. To solve it, we need to perform Gauss-Jordan row reduction on the augmented matrix. We can do so via the RREF command. Normally, I named the reduced variable x, but the output of the RREF command doesn't technically produce the x vector, hence the name change. The row reduced augmented matrix gives some interesting results. We can see that i4 and i7 are free variables. We can arbitrarily assign their values within the context of the problem. We can write the other i's in terms of these two. Looking at the first line, we have i1 plus i4 minus i7 equals 5, or i1 equals negative i4 plus i7 plus 5. We can repeat this process for i2, i3, i5, and i6. Eventually, we'll end up with the equations on the screen. Because i4 and i7 are free, we need to pick appropriate values. Because each road is one way, each i, including i4 and i7, must be greater than or equal to 0. We should probably also make sure each i is an integer because we probably won't measure anything like half of a car passing through an intersection. The i6 equation stipulates i7 must be at least 30. The i2 equation stipulates i4 must be less than or equal to the quantity of i7 minus 5. This gives us a lower bound on i7 and an upper bound on i4. If both of these equations are satisfied, then all of the traffic flows within the network will be at least 0. Instead of looking at a bunch of equations, why not plot them? I've already done this in the last part of the script because the plot is actually a fairly complicated 3D plot. The code generates a 3D plot of i1, i2, and i3 given various values of i4 and i7. i7 will range from 30 to 80. 30 is the lower limit based on the i6 equation, and I arbitrarily chose 80 as the upper limit so you can replace 80 with whatever number you want. i4 will range from 0 to 25. 0 is the lower limit because we can't have any negative traffic flows. 25 is the upper limit because the i2 equation stipulates i4 must be less than the quantity of i7 minus 5, so if the minimum allowable i7 is 30, then the maximum allowable i4 is 30 minus 5, or 25. I'm not plotting i5 and i6 on this plot because they're only functions of i7, but I did so in the code which you can uncomment down here and run below. Be warned that if you uncomment and run this code, it becomes pretty messy, so that's why I commented it out, just for you to experiment on your own. It's more or less the same code as this code up here, with a few minor alterations. The mesh grid statements generate the i4 and i7 matrices, which are basically large matrices that MATLAB requires to plot in 3D. The next line sets the order of the colors in which i1, i2, and i3 will appear on the graph. The winter command is a built-in color set. When called, it returns RGB triplets corresponding to some greenish and bluish colors that look kind of wintry. The three argument specifies that we need three of the colors contained in the winter color scheme. This is just to make the plot look nice. You can replace this line with standard colors like red, green, and blue if you want. The body of the for loop computes i1 through i3 and sets any negative currents to NaN, which stands for not a number. 
n a n values are not plotted, so the expression essentially sets all negative currents to some placeholder that MATLAB considers junk and won't show up on the graph. I did this because negative currents are contextually insensible. Finally, the surf command is basically the 3D equivalent of the plot command. As expected, the plot only contains positive i1 through i3 values for various combinations of i4 and i7. We can see that all three planes have some diagonal line in the i4, i7 plane, so i4 and i7 must have some sort of dependency. Remember that we actually confirmed this by hand when we said that i4 is less than the quantity of i7 minus 5. The i2 plane sits the lowest among the three planes, which once again confirms the i2 equation determines the limiting value of i4. Test out various points on the plot. You can hover over a point and it'll return the i4 value as x, the i7 value as y, and the i1, i2, or i3 value as z, depending on which plane you pick the point from. If you plug the i4 and i7 values into the corresponding equation, you should get the z value shown on the plot. That wraps up part E of the problem. After row reducing, we saw that i4 and i7 are free variables. We place constraints on each free variable within the context of the problem, and we visualized how i1 through i3 vary when we vary the values of the free variables within their constraints. The last subpart of the problem wants us to find the minimum number of vehicles that are allowed on the stretch of Grape Street East between Pear and Apple Streets so that the network is undisturbed. Remember that we called this particular road segment I7. Basically, we need to find the value of I7 such that the intersections involving I7 don't have a negative flow, so we need to look at the Grape East and Pear and Grape East and Apple intersections. We can see that if I7 is less than 30, I6 will have a negative flow, so I7 must carry at least 30 vehicles per hour at all time in order to prevent I6 from going negative. This is just confirming what we already found earlier, but asked in a slightly different way. This concludes a traffic network problem. I really like this problem because it's so different from the other examples we've done. The inclusion of a non-square A matrix by itself is a pretty hefty curveball. But what I really like about this problem is that you have to keep the context in mind when you choose the values of the free variables. We can't just choose any values for I4 and I7. We have to select them such that we don't cause any of the other I's to become negative, because a negative current in this problem is unallowable due to all the streets being one way. I hope you take some time to fully understand the workings of this problem. Many linear systems in real life do not have a square coefficient matrix, so understanding their nuances is critical. In fact, we'll cover curve fitting in a little bit, which inherently solves a non-square, and in some cases, non-linear system. Granted, this problem illustrated an under-constrained system, and curve fitting tends to deal with over-constrained systems, but you get the idea. See you next time.